Hi folks, Rob back for another Rob Plays, and this time I'm going to check out two Konami, uh, very early Konami uh, MSX conversions of their arcade games. What we've got up now is Super Cobra, um, these are both 1983, I'm going to also look at Time Pilot next, but we'll start with Super Cobra, um, I've got these as some carts a while back, and on their own I think as episodes they're not really going to make for a good standalone episode each, but doing them both together, I think it'll be a cool idea, and I've got the MSX out because I want to record some other stuff. So anyway, let's do this. One player with joystick. So, Super Cobra, of course, was released in the arcades. It is kind of a, it's hard to describe it quickly. I mean, in a ways, it's, it's based on Scramble, but rather than uh, five kind of lengthy stages, you've got 10 smaller ones. Um, the way the zones are, but it's it's essentially the core gameplay except this time you're piloting a helicopter and aiming to steal gold rather than a star, star fighter trying to bomb a, a fortress. You've still got the same, you know, avoid the missiles, blow up the fuel, and that's that little yellow bar in the corner, and you know, if this is like, um, I believe tricky stuff, it's like an 8k ROM game, so it's, these are, this is like 1983, which is, you know, Basically when the MSX came out, so this is, you know, ooh, basically launch era. And honestly, it's actually pretty good fun. I mean, I'm sitting here, you know, there's not much to the game. You're just flying through, firing, bombing, and, you know, I like the fact that it's actually just a um, single, single joystick button. You know, it's still sort of early enough where the standard was really just around the single fire button. And so even though I'm playing with my, um, my trusty uh, two-button gamepad, really I only just need the first button here. And I could have used one of my 64 sticks. Oh yeah, first stage is cleared. That's sort of the, the other difference is, it's like, there are, like you've got these stages in, in 100 mile lots, which it, I think it's just presentation really. I mean, in the arcade game it's, it's virtually scramble, um, and so if you don't really get scramble on the machine, I, I I don't know if there is a good version of scramble. I mean, these days if I want, if I'm want to play a version of scramble that's not on the yeah not the arcade version on Mame, I will play that that amazing 64 version from a couple of years ago, which still gets me to play every now and then. Um, it's a great good version, but this you know this is pretty early on. You know these machine you know. Keeping a fairly small ROM, fairly compact game. It's kind of Spartan. But it's actually fun in its own way. Mm -hmm. Let's do another run. Do one more run and then get its classic title up. Uh, one player with joystick. And that that option menu of like, one player with joystick, one player with keyboard, it so, so genuinely makes me think of, um, of like Coleco stuff. But I don't think I don't think this is on the collector. It just reminds me of that menu. But hey, let's keep going. Um, oh, that was a silly move because I could have. Yeah, the sprites. Yeah, the, the limited colors. Yeah, you know, these MSX sprites on the for MSX One hardware really only single color, and yeah, you know, the exception of like the fuel bases and those missile. And those turrets, um, they're all pretty well defined. It's nice and crisp. Um, I seem to always run into those missiles. And the scrolling, you know, I know a lot of people will rubbish on um, early MSX1 games because they don't have smooth scrolling. But it really depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Like, I don't think this is too bad for being just like for being a character block at a time. You're like, you're not... It's not pushing it too fast, and it's not pushing it too slow. I mean, even when you factor in the... You know, I'm running this on a Powell MSX, so it's probably going to be, you know, a chunk slower than it was as originally designed. And... You know, you've got to, you've got to be patient because of the fact that, you know, capture hardware and capture interfaces, um... You know, it, it's a lot more fiddly. Anyway, so that... That's Super Cobra. It's kind of simple. Kind of not a bad conversion. I actually don't mind it. It's good fun. But it's, you know, for an early one, it, it's pretty good fun. And 
and it's tough. So I'm going to power down, swap over, get Time Pilot up, which is next, and I'll be back in a tick. And we've got Time Pilot up. So Time Pilot, you can sort of see, still has that same kind of starting. Let's hit one for our wow, one player with joystick. And of course, yeah, these were, this was a year after. Now, I'm going to be kind of honesty. My, my impressions aren't so good with Time Pilot. Uh, I'm quite a fan of the visual arcade game. I'm not a master at it, but it's um, one that has influenced a bit of some of my own you know, game design exploits. Um, and the one thing is the game feel is really off here. And I, I don't know how much of that is down to just, you know, time constraints, cartridge size and whatnot, but it's all... Oh, but you just get things like that happen far too frequently. It, it, it's sort of like when you turn, it's not as precise turning as it was in the arcade game. Now I don't know if that's really down to the way that, um, it's hard to tell if that is down to the way that the arcade machine is, the way the translation functions where your, um, you know, the character scrolling set up with the MSX and some of the other constraints, but it always feels like Like, your plane isn't turning, like, it, it's not turn. Like, it's not turning, you know, in the arcade game, you don't turn on a dime. You, you have a bit of, you do have a bit of, you know, turning thing, but it's definitely a lot, lot more responsive turning than it is here, and it really impacts the game in my book. Um, I, yeah, if I'm going to want to play Time Pilot on a home machine, I think that despite the slowdown, um, Space Pilot on the 64 is probably my go-to. Um, oh, oh, see, I should be able to turn away or something there. Um, let's see if we can at least warp to, to World War II. Uh, I mean, the graphics aren't too bad. I think they actually are very nice and crisp, you know, for the mostly single-color sprites. Um, like, and I don't, I don't really feel like missing the bullets visually it's more just the turning mechanics make it so just the way that the turning is handled like the lag oh, not really lag all right there's the boss so let's get yes airship is down so let's go to 1940 mm. i always love that sequence in the arcade game when the, when the warp happens anyway yeah, I really, this is the one I think I'm, I, I'm disappointed with, if I had to say. I quite like Super Cobra. I think it's a really good conversion for the hardware. Time Pilot, not so much. Um, well, let's go for one more run. And I'll probably call this video a wrap. Um, I was close. I'm mean, gonna I have to admit now, like this is my third run, and I, I haven't played this in a while. Like I don't think I played it much since, other since actually getting the game. And I think you can get used to that turning, but it's just, just, it just doesn't feel right. And you know, when it comes to games, it's really about how it feels is what makes a good game. Yeah, for a shooter, you really want to have something that's responsive. And gives you, you know, when you when you try to turn to avoid an obstacle, you want to be able to dodge it. You know, and I, and yeah, there's a reason a lot of shooters, are, you know, very old school in how they function in terms of just like, you know, bounding boxes and uh, keyboard input and you know digital input, uh, which of course makes it hard when bringing them onto modern systems where digital input isn't the thing anymore, or is less of a thing. Oh, that was close. That was so close. All right. So there's the there's the Zeppelin. Blast it. Okay. I'm not really Zeppelin airship. I guess... It... Got it. All right, let's warp to the next stage. Okay. I don't know how much going to come off in the in the actual capture, but there's like 
uh, because of the, the the color of those enemy fighters, like the red, like there's slight trails I get on the t on my TV. Um, and actually, just it just it's a subtle it's a subtle thing. I'm sure it's a combination of you know upscaling and LCD greater gray lag and all of that. It's a whole bunch of factors. I mean, if I'm playing this on a real monitor. Uh, I'm I don't know how it would compare, but you know, it's kind of special in its own way. Uh, let's keep going. We're doing alright this, this time around, I mean, one last plane on the little sidebar. Ooh, they're all cleared. Oh, that was close. Ooh, that was also close. A little too close for comfort. Yeah, hey, stage three, which is the choppers in NARM, so that's going to be interesting. I, I swear on the arcade game when I've played it on the likes of MAME. Um, well, a few times on some of those multi-cab dealies. I swear I've got usually rocked up an extra life or by now, so... Yeah. Yeah, well, my big complaint with this version of Time Pilot is it's really that turning circle. It's not too bad otherwise. If it wasn't for that, it'd actually be a nice conversion for 1983 standards. I thought that missile was going to get me for a moment there. Um, yeah, I think that's that's really my only complaint here. Um, ooh. got extra life too, haha. -ha. And we're almost, ooh. Okay, there's the mega chopper. So it gets skin. Yeah, I'm doing a lot better than I would on the arcade game. The arcade game, because it's just, you know, so much more fluidity, so much more objects being thrown around, it's it's definitely a game that that, that can be brutal at points. I've, I've certainly not, certainly not quite mastered it. All right, so 1984, which means we're in this game's future. Ah, oh, interesting. I have to, I have to refresh my memory, I swear on the arcade game, um, when you're in this stage, uh, you're actually fighting, like, the, the other aircraft are basically the same as your, your, your little ship. Ooh. So, oh, well, hey, this is actually probably a much longer run than I thought I'd have. Um, ooh. Okay. They're getting tougher, though, that's for sure, and they're coming in bigger numbers. That's okay, we, you've got, we're down to three on the gauge. Two on the gauge. Almost 20k, so hopefully an extra life. 994. Nine, five. Oh, no extra life. Damn it, you tricky game. I was up for an extra life. Oh! I think I'm going to call it quits there. Um, Time Pilot, sort of a mixed bag. I think I was having a bit more fun with it at the end. When Once I got a little used to the turning, I think that that kind of ruins the conversion accuracy aspect and kind of drags the game down in my book. Um, your opinion is probably different, and I love to hear them, so do... Do leave some thoughts below if you've played both of these, whether on you know on an MSX emulator or, or on real kit. Um, as always, thank you very much for watching. Um, if you haven't already, please do consider hitting that subscribe button. New episodes come out Friday, and of course, helping you know spread episodes around. Um, love hearing from love hearing from folks as always, and thanks again for watching. And I'll catch you all next time.